Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we dive into today's message, I'd like to ask a special favor. If you appreciate the content we share, please help us spread these blessings. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Your comments are precious to us, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts below. Now, let's get to our topic for today. The Good Samaritan, A Lesson in Compassion How often do we encounter situations where someone needs help, but we hesitate to act? Maybe out of fear, haste, or simply indifference. The parable of the Good Samaritan, narrated by Jesus, challenges us to rethink our attitudes and truly embrace love for our neighbor. Imagine the scene, a dusty, dangerous road between Jerusalem and Jericho. A man lies wounded by the roadside, the victim of a brutal robbery. He's alone, bleeding, desperately in need of help. Who will come to his aid? This story, found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 verses 30 to 37, is not just an ancient narrative, but a timeless call to compassion and action. Let's explore together the profound teachings it offers us. The setting of this parable is crucial to understanding its importance. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho was known as the blood path due to its danger. Approximately 17 miles long with a descent of almost 3,280 feet, it was ideal terrain for ambushes and robberies. Jesus chose this familiar scenario for his listeners, creating a story that resonated with their everyday experiences and fears. In this threatening context, we encounter our first character, the victim, an anonymous man, stripped of identity, social position, or religious affiliation. Jesus intentionally omits these details to remind us that human suffering knows no boundaries. Pain, fear, and vulnerability are universal experiences that connect us beyond our superficial differences. The biblical text tells us, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Luke 10 to 30. We can feel the desperation of this situation. A man stripped not only of his material possessions but of his dignity, abandoned to die. And this is where the parable takes an interesting turn. Two characters enter the scene who, by all expectations of the time, should have been the heroes of the story, a priest and a Levite. Both were respected religious figures, knowledgeable in God's law and, presumably, examples of virtue and compassion. However, what do we see? A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Luke 10 to 31 to 32. What a shock for Jesus's listeners. Those who should have been the first to help, God's representatives on earth, simply ignore the suffering of others. We might ask ourselves, why did they act this way? Perhaps they feared for their own safety, imagining that the robbers might still be nearby. Or maybe, concerned with laws of ritual purity, they didn't want to contaminate themselves by touching someone potentially dead. Regardless of the reasons, their actions, or lack thereof, reveal a fundamental flaw. They prioritized rules and social conventions above basic human compassion. This part of the parable confronts us with an uncomfortable question. How often do we, who consider ourselves people of faith, fail to demonstrate practical love? How often do our fears, prejudices, or simply our haste prevent us from extending a hand to someone in need? Enter the unlikely hero, the Samaritan. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. Luke 10-33 to understand the impact of this twist, we need to comprehend the historical context. Samaritans were despised by Jews. Considered a mixed race, both ethnically and religiously, they were seen as impure and heretical. The animosity between Jews and Samaritans was so intense that many Jews preferred to make long detours on their journeys rather than pass through Samaritan territory. 
Jesus, by choosing a Samaritan as the hero of his story, is directly challenging his listeners' prejudices. He's saying, in essence, true love for one's neighbor transcends ethnic, cultural, and religious barriers. Genuine compassion knows no boundaries. The text continues. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Luke 10.34 Observe the richness of detail in this description. The Samaritan doesn't just help superficially, he becomes deeply involved. First, he approaches. This simple act already demonstrates courage, as he's putting himself in potential danger. The wine and oil mentioned were common remedies of the time wine to clean wounds and oil to relieve pain. The Samaritan uses his own resources to care for a stranger. More than that, he puts the wounded man on his own animal. Imagine the scene, the Samaritan probably walking alongside, carefully guiding the animal so as not to aggravate the man's wounds. This act symbolizes personal sacrifice. The Samaritan delays his own journey, exposes himself to danger, and assumes the physical discomfort of walking so that the wounded man can rest. But the Samaritan's compassion goes further. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Luke 10.35 Two denarii equaled two days' wages for an average worker. The Samaritan not only provides first aid, but ensures the man's ongoing care, even in his absence. This extravagant generosity challenges us. How often do we limit our help to the bare minimum? The Samaritan shows us that true love is costly. It costs time, resources, and often takes us out of our comfort zone. The parable ends with a provocative question from Jesus. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The answer is obvious, but deeply challenging. The one who had mercy on him, the expert in the law, replied. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This conclusion is a call to action. Jesus isn't just telling an edifying story. He's calling us to a new way of living. The go and do likewise echoes through the centuries challenging each of us to rethink our priorities and actions. But what does it mean to do likewise in our current context? How can we live out the spirit of the Good Samaritan in a world so different from that of Jesus? First, we need to cultivate an attentive eye. The Samaritan saw the wounded man. In a world full of distractions, where we often rush through life, we need to develop the ability to really see the needs around us. This might mean noticing the coworker who's going through a difficult time, the elderly neighbor who needs help with groceries, or the homeless person everyone ignores. Second, we must be willing to approach. Fear often paralyzes us. We fear getting involved. We fear the consequences. We fear discomfort. But Christian love requires courage. Approaching might mean initiating a difficult conversation, offering help even when we're not sure how we'll be received, or simply being present when someone is suffering. Third, we need to be willing to use our resources. The Samaritan used his time, goods, and money to help. In a society that often teaches us to accumulate and protect what is ours, Jesus' call is radical. He challenges us to see our resources not as exclusive property, but as tools to bless others. Fourth, we must overcome prejudices and social barriers. The Samaritan helped someone who under normal circumstances would probably despise him. In an increasingly polarized world where it's easy to demonize those who are different from us, Jesus' call is for a love that transcends political, racial, religious, or social divisions. Finally, we need to understand that compassion often requires a long-term commitment. The Samaritan didn't just provide first aid, but ensured the wounded man's ongoing care. This challenges us to think beyond one-time acts of kindness and consider how we can make sustainable and meaningful changes in people's lives and in our communities. As we conclude our reflection on this powerful parable, we are left with a challenge. How will we respond? 
Will we continue our journey, passing to the other side of the road when we see someone in need? Or will we stop, see, feel compassion and act? Jesus' call is clear, go and do likewise. May we by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit live as true Good Samaritans in our broken and needy world. May our lives be a living testimony of Christ's transforming love, bringing hope, healing, and restoration wherever we are. Dear friends, I hope this message has touched your hearts and inspired you to live out Christ's love in a practical and powerful way. If you were blessed by this video, don't forget to help us spread this message. Give it a like, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to the Blessed Messages for You channel for more content that builds your faith and challenges you to grow in Christ. Leave a comment sharing how this parable impacted you or tell us about an experience where you were a good Samaritan or received unexpected help from a stranger. Your stories can inspire and encourage others. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Until the next video, and remember, we are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. Let's go and do likewise.